Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are absolutely delighted to be home. Uh, it's a very emotional re return home to Australia. It was a very long journey home to Australia. It started two days ago. Julian was released from bail in the UK early on Monday morning, UK time. We had to spend 12 hours in Stansted Airport before we boarded a flight to Bangkok. Another eight or nine hours in Bangkok before we flew to Saipan, where Julian entered his plea. Um, we are absolutely delighted after a very long and complex negotiation with the US government that we've reached this plea deal that enabled him to come home to Australia as a free man. Um, the agreement is that he will spend no more time in prison. The terms of the plea deal are, unfortunately, that he, in order to achieve his freedom and to leave the high security prison in Belmarsh, he had to plead. He, he had to choose to plead guilty to, to conspiracy to commit espionage for publishing evidence of U.S. war crimes, human rights abuse. Finish yours, mate. Guys, it's really hard to do this when there's so much going, noise going on in the background. Thank you very much. In order to win his freedom, Julian pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage for publishing evidence of US war crimes, human rights abuse, uh, human rights abuse and US wrongdoing around the world. Uh, this is journalism. This is the criminalization of journalism. And while the plea deal does not set a judicial precedent, it's not a court decision, the prosecution itself sets a precedent that can be used against the rest of the media. It's important that journalists all around the world understand the dangerous precedent that this prosecution has set. An award-winning Australian journalist who's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for these publications has spent more than five years in a high security prison because of this extradition request from the United States. We are absolutely thrilled that Julian is now home in Australia. I can say when we landed here in Australia, I became very emotional uh, the moment we landed. And the Prime Minister was the first person to get on the phone to speak to Julian. Julian thanked him and the team uh, and told the Prime Minister that he had saved his life. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Albanese, for his principled leadership, the statesmanship and diplomacy that he showed in leading the effort to bring Julian home to Australia. It was as opposition leader that he said enough is enough, that there was nothing to be served by Julian's ongoing incarceration. As Prime Minister, he kept his word. He raised it at the highest level at every single opportunity. He has continued to ask the US to bring this to an end and his efforts completely changed the situation for Julian and enabled our negotiations with the US government that allowed us to reach this outcome. I also want to thank our ambassador to the US, Kevin Rudd, our former prime minister, whose relentless efforts in Washington, working together closely with us, with myself and my co-counsel Barry Pollack, completely changed our relationship with the US and completely changed the negotiations. Without his efforts and his adept diplomacy, we would not be in the position we are today and Julian would not be home. I also want to thank Stephen Smith, our High Commissioner in London, who worked tirelessly, and the team at DFAT, um, the consular staff who, who really facilitated our trip home and were incredibly kind to Julian along the way. This is a huge win for Australia and for Australian democracy. This is a huge win for free speech. This is a huge win for Australia that our Prime Minister stood up to our ally, the United States, and demanded the return of an Australian citizen. And that Julian came home today is the product of 14 long years of legal battles, 
political advocacy and ongoing campaigning, not just by us, but by so many people in this community. A global movement was created around Julian and the need to protect free speech, and it's that global movement that has led to his release today. I really want to thank everyone who has joined us in this fight, who have supported us along the way, because without that support and the campaigning that's been done, we just wouldn't be in this position. Julian is incredibly grateful for the support that he's had from the Australian government and from the public here in Australia, and we're delighted that he's home. He's finally home. I'm going to invite my... I'm happy... We might take questions. I might just... Take questions at the end, if that's okay. But I'd like to invite my, my US co-counsel, Barry Pollack, to come and uh, address you about the plea deal. Good evening. Uh, earlier this evening, uh, earlier today, in a courthouse in Saipan, uh, we had a hearing that brought to a close a prosecution that never should have been brought. Um, Julian Assange uh, has for so many years uh, sacrificed uh, for freedom of speech and, and, and freedom of the press. He's sacrificed his own freedom. And, and finally today that tragic situation ended and we are all grateful that Julian is back home in Australia where he belongs, uh, back with Stella, uh, back with his children, reunited with his father. Um, it is unprecedented. In, unprecedented in the United States uh, to use the Espionage Act to criminally prosecute a journalist or a publisher. Uh, it's uh, in the more than 100 year history of that law, it has never been used in this fashion. Uh, it is certainly our hope uh, that it will never be, again be used in this fashion. Uh, Julian spent years in Belmarsh. Uh, no one should spend a day in prison uh, for giving the public newsworthy and important information, in, in this case, information that the United States government had committed war crimes, uh, that there were uh, civilian casualties exponentially greater than the United States government had admitted in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, it was definitely in the public's interest to have this information, and Julian provided it to the public. He performed a, a tremendous public service uh, not a crime. The problem with the Espionage Act is there is no uh, First Amendment defense in the Espionage Act. Uh, it does by its terms not matter the reason why you, you publish. Uh, the U.S. for years, the U.S. government has claimed that these publications did great harm. Today in court, uh, the, the United States government admitted that there is not a single person anywhere that they can produce that was actually harmed by these publications. Um, hopefully this is uh, the end, not just of the case against Julian Assange, but the end of the case against journalism. Thank you. I wish to thank the Prime Minister Albanese, uh, the officials who have been working in DFAT on uh, securing Julian's release. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Australian people who have made this possible, because without their support, there would not be the political space to be able to achieve Julian's freedom. And that support is across, across the board. I thank the opposition for also supporting Julian's release. It took all, all of them. It took millions of people. It took people working behind the scenes, people protesting on the streets for days and weeks and months and years. And we achieved it.
Jul sorry. Julian, Julian wanted me to sincerely thank everyone. He wanted to be here. But you have to understand what he's been through. He needs time. He needs to recuperate. And this is a process. I ask you, please, to give us space, to give us privacy, to find our place, to let our family be a family before he can speak again at a time of his choosing. Um, I think it's important to recognize that Julian's release and the breakthrough in the negotiations came at a time when there had been a breakthrough in the legal case in the UK, in the extradition, where the High Court had allowed permission to appeal. There was a, a court date set for the 9th and 10th of July, an upcoming court date in which Julian would be able to raise the First Amendment uh, uh, argument uh, at the High Court. And it is in this context that things finally started to move. Uh, I think it revealed uh, how uncomfortable uh, the, the United States government is in fact of having these arguments aired because this case, the fact is that this case is an attack on journalism, it's an attack on the public's right to know and it should never have been brought. Julian should never have spent a single day in prison. But today we celebrate because today Julian is free. Listen, we'll take 10 minutes of questions, just address them to the individual. And I'll tell you when we're at our last three or so. I think the first question uh, is Robert Sanders. You refer to Julian Assange as revived this huge debate about whether his activities were right or wrong. And we've seen political figures in the US and in Australia here say that he's no hero, uh, that his disclosures put lies at risk. Some Democrats don't like uh, the disclosures about Hillary, Hillary Clinton, for instance. What's your response to this sort of? <laughs> fundamental argument that's been made against Julian Assange, uh, that he put lives at risk, for instance, and that his disclosures were not in the public interest. Well, to start with, there's no evidence of any actual harm, and that's exactly what the US government acknowledged in, in court today in Saipan. So there is no evidence that anyone was physically harmed as a result of those publications. The public interest in those publications is clear. Evidence of war crimes, that the US had not disclosed the extent of civilian casualties in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, the use of torture and other forms of human rights abuse around the world. There is no denying the public interest in WikiLeaks publications, which is reflected in the reasons why WikiLeaks has won the Walkley Award for Most Outstanding Contribution to Journalism, the Sydney Peace Prize. The, the fact that Julian's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize every year since those publications. So to suggest that this was not in the public interest, I don't understand the basis upon which they could possibly suggest that. And so I think it's, this is clear. Yes, I was overcome by emotion when when uh, I first heard uh, that there were crowds cheering that I didn't even know were there uh, behind a fence because it was dark. And then I heard them cheer more and more and, and flashes and then uh, I turned the corner and then I saw that Julian was coming and, um, and we embraced and I mean I think you've seen the pictures. I, I don't want to express in words what is obvious from, from the image. Julian, Julian needs time uh, to recover, uh, to, to get used to freedom. Um, someone told me yesterday 
uh, who, who had been through something similar uh, that freedom comes slowly. And I want Julian to have that space to rediscover freedom slowly and quickly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just wonder if my colleague Sorry. mentioned the Podesta files earlier. Um, I think he may not have read them. Um, could you, now you have the opportunity, just remind us of how that actually performed the DNC and the corruption within. The Podesta files were really good <coughs> for the Democratic National Congress, yes? Look, there was a huge, there was clearly public interest in the, in the DNC materials that was released by WikiLeaks, and in terms of the legality of those publications, there's a there's a U.S. court decision showing that it had the highest possible protection of the First Amendment. So, from a principal point of view, people might not like the politics of any particular publication, but that publication is absolutely protected by the First Amendment, as U.S. courts have found. Jen, Jen, um, are there any post-release conditions? I think it's best Barry speaks to the terms of the plea deal. Um, there are absolutely no restrictions on, on Julian. The case against him is over. Um, uh, there is no gag order. Uh, there are no other restrictions. Uh, he is going to be able to go back to uh, whatever life he chooses to build uh, with Stella and his, his family. Um, the, uh, the negotiations were a protracted uh, process uh, uh, that uh, went on for several months, uh, sort of in fits and, and starts. Uh, there, we were not close to any sort of a resolution uh, until a few weeks ago um, when um, the Department of Justice re-engaged uh, and there have been very intense negotiations over the last few weeks. Um, it, one thing we were very clear about was that any resolution would have to end this matter and that uh, Julian would be free, that he was not going to do additional time in prison, he was not going to do time under supervision, he was not going to do time under a gag order. Uh, so uh, that was one absolute requirement. Uh, another uh, significant point of negotiation was uh, where the plea would be taken. Um, uh, Julian did not want to come to the United States in, in any form. Uh, ultimately, obviously, we negotiated uh, Saipan under uh, conditions where he would be released in the UK. He would come to uh, Saipan not as a uh, prisoner of the United States or of the United Kingdom, uh, and that we would come in and leave on, on the same day, which is exactly what happened. Um, and uh, other provisions of, of the plea that were very significant. Uh, the United States agreed uh, that they are not going to bring any other charges against Julian for any conduct, any publications, any news gathering, uh, anything at all that occurred prior to the time of the plea. Uh, so even if he had prevailed in the extradition proceeding, that would have just resolved this case. This resolves any possible case that the United States could bring against uh, Julian uh, for any subject matter, so that was obviously very significant to us. Uh, Will, Stella, Will, 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 Thank you. Um, Jen, also, Stella, Stella, you called yesterday your hopes for a pardon to be granted to Julian. How do you see that playing out? Would you like the Australian government to support that call? What could be possibly done to actually achieve that outcome in your view? <clears throat> Look, I think uh, today we celebrate Julian's freedom. Today is the day uh, that the plea deal was uh, approved by the judge. I think it's also a day where I hope journalists and um, editors and publishers everywhere realize the danger of the uh, 
of this uh, U.S. case against Julian uh, that criminalizes, that has uh, secured a conviction for news gathering and publishing information that was in the public interest, that was true, uh, that the public deserved to know. And uh, that precedent now can and will be used in the future against the rest of the press. So it is in the, in the interest of all of the press to seek for this uh, current um, state of affairs to, to uh, change through reform of the Espionage Act, uh, through uh, increased uh, press uh, protections, and yes, eventually, when the time um, comes not today, uh, a pardon. Can I ask how hopeful and how confident are you uh, that your husband will be pardoned? And what do you think has been at the absolute core of the shifting sands here that's enabled his release? I think uh, freedom of the press is in a very dangerous place. It's not, it's not evidence that it will uh, move towards more protections, but rather less. Uh, there needs to be a conscious and joint effort to push back. And that pushback should have, that pushback should have resulted in the dropping of the case against Julian. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. That would have been the only good outcome for the press in general uh, if, if the uh, US government had abandoned this case entirely. Uh, now you have uh, you have uh, the press in, in a as vulnerable position as Julian has been. And that, that came the day the indictment came down. Let's be clear about that. That didn't come down with this conviction. Um, and frankly, that mobilization should have happened years ago. And that's what enabled the conviction. I think he'll be pardoned if the press unites to push back against this uh, precedent. Uh, at, because it affects all of you. It affects uh, your future ability to inform the public and to publish without fear. Is Mr. Assange going to meet the Prime Minister in the coming days? No comment. Stella. Stella. We have three more questions. Here, Stella. 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 Here. Well, what I can say from the phone call with the Prime Minister this, morning, this afternoon when we landed is that he is delighted that Stella and Joyner are both now in Australia and and we certainly hope that at some point they'll be able to meet. Does, does Julian plan to keep going with WikiLeaks and publish more documents on journalism? Look, he just arrived in Australia after being in a high security prison for over five years and a, how long? 72 hour flight or something like that. It's uh, premature. Uh, Julian has to recover, that's the priority, uh, and <coughs> the fact is that Julian is, <coughs> will always defend uh, human rights, will always defend <coughs> victims, uh, he's always done that, uh, and that's just part of who he is, he is deeply principled, and he remains deeply principled. And unafraid. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.